Hello, this is Nate with ProServices at Firewalls.com and today I'm going to show you how to set up an SSL VPN. So SSL VPN is a licensed service so we do need to make sure that we have the required license and each instance of a user logging in SSL VPN will use up one of the licenses. So first you can check uh, the status of this by going to device at the top panel and then licenses on the left panel underneath settings. And you can see that under endpoint and remote access services we have SSL VPN here and it is licensed for one user and you do have the option to upgrade this. Okay, so SSL VPN can be set up underneath the network tab and at the left panel all the way at the bottom, you'll find SSL VPN. We will make sure the server is set up, right? And we will activate the server on the WAN interface. The next thing we want to know is the SSL VPN port 4433. This can be changed. Uh, if it interferes with other web services that you may have. You do have the option of using a self-signed or a third-party certificate if you have one imported. Uh, the user domain uh, is important to note. That it is local domain and we will keep it this way. You have the option of enabling management over SSL VPN if you want to manage the firewall from a remote location. Also, 10 minutes of idle time will disconnect the VPN. You have the option to use a RADIUS server for authentication. You can download the client via clicking here. Next, we will look at the client settings. Uh, we have a default profile. We will edit this profile and we can see that we have three tabs, settings, client routes, and client settings. Uh, we will need to set up a range of addresses for SSL VPN clients. I have already set one up. We will create a new network called SSL VPN range two for my instance. The zone type is SSL VPN. We will create a range and let's give all SSL VPN users an address in the range of the 192.168.2 network to 192.168.2.254. Save this range. Next thing we need to look at are client routes. Um, this, are, this is the networks that represent the resources available to anyone logging in using NetExtender. Um, firewall subnets I have already selected uh, includes all networks behind the firewall. You may want to be more specific. In that case, you can select the networks or the default networks uh, such as X0 subnet or any other subnets you've created. For now, we will leave it under firewall subnets. The next thing we will do is look at the client settings. And this is where you can uh, set up DNS. And Windows name services. Uh, we will leave those default. Uh, another Step here is the net extender client settings. We can enable client auto update. We can exit the client after disconnect. And we have the option of enabling NetBIOS over SSL VPN for network shares. And we may also want to a client connection profile so that the user doesn't have to retype the IP address every time they want to log in. Uh, this also does give you the option of caching username and password or prohibiting it, uh, which is a more secure 
method in case of a lost or stolen device. Users can also log in using a web browser by typing in the WAN IP address with the SSL VPN port 4433 at the end. And that gives them virtual office. As we can see down here at the bottom left, we see virtual office uh, allows you to download the NetExtender client. It also allows you to set up virtual bookmarks. Um, so instead of going through the procedure of starting a remote desktop protocol instance, um, you can set this up with a bookmark and just click the bookmark and everything is already configured. So we can see that the status tab will show any existing tunnels that and uh, what users are currently using those tunnels. And you can also see that what bookmarks are in use. Next we can look at the object tab to see that we have an SSL VPN zone and we are able to edit this zone and configure any trust and uh, access rules that are automated for us. And we can also enable and disable security services, uh, which I would not recommend uh, disabling them. So if you have these security services, go ahead and enable them. Next thing we want to do is actually give users access to the SSL VPN zone. And we can do that by going under device at the top tab. Go down to users on the left. Go to local users and groups. Add a local user. Um, let's create one here. And that user must be part of the SSL VPN services group to have access to SSL VPN at all. The user will also need VPN access granted and we will come back to this in a moment. You will see the local groups here that SSL VPN services here now contains my user that I just set up. Um, you will want to edit the local group settings of this group. And here you can also add members of the group and you will need to set up access to networks. So in this, for this example, we'll just do firewalled subnets. And then say that you actually want this user to only have access to one network and not all of the networks behind there. You can be more specific and choose, say you want him to access only X0 subnet. And the last thing we'll do is take a look at the auto-generated access rules uh, for SSL VPN zone to the LAN zone. And we can do that using this zone matrix selector uh, so go down to SSL VPN, down to LAN, and that'll show us what was set up. And we can see that our source was SSL VPN to LAN with the firewalls.com scope and to the X0 subnet. And that's how you set up SSL VPN. And if you found this video helpful, like and subscribe to the channel. And lastly, check out firewalls.com.